Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Dom, and in the last episode we went ahead and actually covered the empty state for our uh, application here that we've been building. Uh, we have some items in here now, so you can't see it, but trust me that if we do hit no items in our list, we go ahead and just, um, you know, present this little UI to the user. So if you missed that, you just check out the previous episode. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Epoxy makes things very simple and logical for us to uh, find ourselves in that state and then handle the situation that we are in that state. Uh, and so today I wanted to just kind of update a little bit of the interaction that we can have on this screen, right? So we can't really uh, click on anything here. Actually, at this point, there's no way to edit any of these. And there's also the only way to get rid of them is to swipe to dismiss, which is pretty cool. It's a nifty feature. Again, if you missed that uh, in a previous episode, I'll link a card in the top right so you can go ahead and check that out because it's definitely uh, very good to know, but also, you know, part of the reason I put in this priority thing here, at least in my mind, was, you know, that you could very easily just tap this um, little area here and it would rotate through the priorities, right? So we have the idea that uh, priorities right now are listed as one, two, and three, and that corresponds to the green, the orange, and the red um, that we see here in the UI. And so if you clicked on the green, my thought was that, okay, it would kind of bump the priority up. So now it would have the orange color. And then you do it on the orange one, bump the priority to three. So now you have a red color. So basically saying, you know, hey, like, I, I really need to buy this. This is a bit more important kind of thing. And then if you were to actually, uh, you know, click on a red one, it would cycle all the way back down to the green. And so it would just kind of, you know, rotate around those three different options here. So we have, um, we have built out where we have a stub here for on bump priority that gets invoked when the user taps that area of this of the cell except we are not actually doing anything <laughs> with it at this very moment so uh it should be pretty straightforward right so we can say current um priority equals the item entity dot priority and this item entity was the one that was clicked that we pass in so then we can say uh, new priority, well, let's just make this a variable. New priority equals current priority plus one. And we're going to say if new priority uh, is greater than three, new priority equals one. No, equals one. All right, so just a simple way to kind of update it check if we're basically cycling too far and then um, we set it back down to one. And now a very interesting property of the data class here is, you know, so we have a variable at this moment that is uh, in reference to the original um, item entities property. Then we go ahead and actually do our little math here that we just talked about, but now we want to basically update this item entity. However, the problem is everything here is defined as vows. So we can't just actually operate on the object itself because we don't have the ability to change the object once or any of the content in the object once it has been created. And so while you might think that's a pain, I think that's actually a very good reason to use your, um, to use the data class here. You can define things as var and then change them on the fly if you do if you do need to. Um, however, I think whenever you can, it's important to try to use the vowels and then use the data class uh, copy functionality. Uh, this just makes your object objects immutable. It provides a little bit more. Uh, well, well, the vowels make your object immutable, right? It, it makes things a bit more set in stone. You can't mess things up, or more importantly, another thread can't operate on the object that you're you know looking at and and you'd kind of reduce some funky behavior when you get to um, you know a more complicated task so instead we can um, basically create a new item entity so we'll call this the updated item entity will equal our item entity dot copy with the priority equals new priority and so what this function is going to actually do here is it will create a clone of the current instance of the item entity and then you're able to basically overwrite particular fields here. So you can see if I 
uh, command P in here, you can actually go ahead and like update any of these fields. Sorry, it looks a little weird because I'm calling one out already. But you can see here the ID, the title, that like, you, you know, you can uh, basically create the object at this moment in time if you wanted to. But because we are copying it, it's going to take all of the previous fields in this item entity, put it in the new one, and then when you go ahead and specify something here like priority, um, it's going to take this value of priority instead of whatever exists in the item entity. So now at this point here, <clears throat> we have free reign to use this object to um, do what we want, and it actually is going to be slightly different than the previous one. So I'm going to I just want to get to a line. We're not going to actually do this. Uh, I just want to have a line of code there so that I can hit a breakpoint and show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so we have our, our data here. We're going to go ahead and click one of these um, areas. And if we go ahead and hit our breakpoint and take a look at it, we can see here that the item entity, the one that was passed in here, has the priority of one, right? That was the green one that we clicked. We can also take a look at, I'm getting a little bit more technical here, the item entity at 11077. That is actually the memory address location for this object. And then we can see here the updated item entry with a priority of two. If you remember, we had one in the previous uh, item entity. And then we can also take a look here and see item entity at 11078. So you can see here in the code as well, inside the IDE, that there actually are two separate item entities here, one at you know 11077 and one at 78 uh, for the memory location. So we actually have two different objects here. They have all of the same values otherwise, except the fact that the priority differs. Right, so the ID is B9F681A. Uh, the ID is B9F681A. Right, so we clearly didn't set that. That came from the copy functionality, and the only thing that we did was override our priority here. I wonder. Ah, it actually works because <laughs> delete works on the. Um, the object's ID, and of course we had an ID. Uh, the same because we copied it. So we just deleted that instead. Whoops. All right. But what we want to do here is we want to update uh, our item. Update uh, item. I'm going to go ahead in here and just basically duplicate that, not update, update, all right, we're going to do update here, do, 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 do. change this annotation to be the update from room, and there we go, uh, so now everything downstream should work, and blah, 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 so now instead of delete, we can call update item, and then once this updates, it should again trigger our flow to collect a new list. And we will propagate that information back up to the uh, UI layer. <clears throat> I am not confident that that completely rebuilt because the screen didn't move. So I'm going to go ahead and just rerun that. So now if we toggle this option here, you can see that it changes through all of our different priorities. No matter how fast, I mean, I'm trying to click this as fast as possible and, you know, the computer, the emulator is having absolutely no time keeping up with it or no problem keeping up with it. Um, and look at that. So uh, I hope that made sense. I hope this little bit of logic here makes sense and uh, happy to introduce the copy functionality and then also just how simple it is to kind of interact with the CRUD, you know, the create, uh, what is it, create, remove, no. What the heck does CRUD stand for? Create, update, delete, is that all that it is? Hmm. 
Anyway, <laughs> the basic operations here, you know, insert, delete, update, query to get this specific items and stuff like that. Um, and just how simple it is and, and you know, we're kind of falling into in line here, the delete item, insert item, and update item, they're all looking relatively similar. Um, to to be quite honest, but you know that's kind of what we have to do in order to get this uh, get this working. So um, yeah, this looks good. I'm happy with how it came out, and I think in the next episode we're going to go ahead and uh, discuss sorting and actually modifying this list a little bit here. Uh, so maybe you know the items that are the highest priority should be at the top of the list because you know clearly you want to buy those items or you've been neglecting those items for. Uh, longer than the others, or or you just need them more critically than um, you know than, than than the other ones, right? If you had toilet paper on the list and avocados, um, I think we all could agree that toilet paper is just slightly more uh, should have a slightly higher priority than avocados. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a little bit more, uh, I guess, intuitive and interactive, and just continue to show off um, epoxy, and then eventually build out like a whole sorting system here that we're just going to be able to, you know, uh, use to provide a better, uh, a better UI, a better UX for uh, this application. Maybe we'll even start adding some headers and stuff like that. So I'd hope to see you in the next one. Please subscribe if you're enjoying the content so you don't miss out, and I'll catch you in the next one.